Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today we are talking about the new limited guild battle system. And now that I've had a couple days to play with it, I have some thoughts, um, some of which are very positive, some of which I think are, um, I'll say constructive criticisms. Those seem to be more useful than the other kind. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's start talking about the hows of limited guild battle first because I've gotten a lot of questions about this. So on the screen right now, what I'm going to show you is like the one, two, three of exactly how to do this thing, right? Like I'm going to assume you've set a team and you could have watched other videos or learned how to like make your limited cost team. Okay, cool. Let's talk about actually doing the actions. Three step process, pretty simple, right? Step one, you have to actually select your team, which you've all probably figured out by now. Then you're asked to either attack or support. Now this is where it starts getting a little bit confusing, right? Um, if you attack, it counts as one attack. You have two attacks. If you support, it will count as either one or two attacks. Does that make sense? I think it does. You have two attacks, so you can attack twice, or you can support, which will use one or two, or you can actually do some combination of the two of them. What do I mean by that? Well, the support ability is what is actually really interesting. And I want to go kind of line by line. We have three different support actions we can take. The first one is cast. Um, this is a very, very useful one, in my opinion. It's probably the one that people are going to use the most because it only costs you one attack. You see right there on use, on the use button, that cast costs one attack that's what the two swords and the one mean cool what does this do well it restores the ability uses one time of one of your allies so say you have an ally who swung with like a cane and they had bells on Dwayne and they used courage and all this stuff right so they have another attack that they're waiting for and maybe you attacked once and lost and you died and so you have an extra attack just sitting in the bank well until now that attack was worthless you just wasted it now though you can go to support you can refresh your allies abilities you can give that person their bells back and their courage buff back um and you know whatever tmr they have zombie ryrie use tmr all of these really useful skills that they might have been out of now you've really powered up their second attack and even though you died with your first, you're not just wasting your second. So that's really valuable. Um, I've got more to say about that later. But for now, I just want to talk about what these all do. Okay, what about the second one? Scout. Uh, Scout seems like the worst one to me by 50,000 miles. Um, it costs both of your attacks. And all it does is display the... Um, statistics like the build of who, of one of your opponents if this scouted like four people or something maybe it would be useful if it scouted one person but it only cost one i could see there being like very fringe situations where that's useful but as it stands now it costs both of your attacks um i have not thought of a good situation to use this in yet um I've heard in JP that it only cost one in their last limited guild battle. If that's true, here's the situation where you would use it, right? You're dead. There's nobody to refresh um, with cast and you have to go to bed or you're not going to be able to log back on the rest of the day. So you'd click it, use your one last attack, pick somebody on their team, scout it out. Okay. In that scenario, it's useful. Um, it's hard to think of another scenario besides that would be very good, even at one cost. As it stands now at two, this is one of the things where I'm going to be critical of this new system and say that, like, it, Scout is not well thought out. Or maybe it was just implemented incorrectly or something like that. Let's look at the third option, though. Supply. This one's really interesting and actually lends itself to some cool opportunities for your guild if you want to get a little uh, crazy, right? Okay, so what this does is this gives one of your other allies one more attack at the cost of both of your attacks. Initially, you're like, wait, the math on that's bad. Why would I trade two for one of my allies one? Well, say it's towards the end of the day. You log on late and you're like, okay, I need to get my guild battle in. 
you look at the defenses and you're like, uh, we've got Super Stern, Warrior of Light, Little Leela running Evade. Mm, yeah, I can't beat Evade. You look at the second one, you're like, mm, Super Stern, Warrior of Light, Venera. Yep, still can't beat Evade. You look at the third one, you're like, uh, yep, it's Evade again. And all of the enemy teams left are Evade, because there's only maybe three. And you're like, I have two attacks but I can't even hit those people. I'm guaranteed to get zero stars. Well, you can look through your teammates list and see, aha, we have somebody running like Frederica with um, an accuracy card and they're pretty healthy. I could donate both of my attacks to this person and they could go clean up one of those evade teams and maybe that pushes us over the top and we win today's Guild Wars. Bingo, that's when supply becomes really useful. Uh, when you just know you're gonna wipe, hey, give your attack to somebody else. It's also pretty cool because that means that other person now has more than two attacks and can earn more than six stars in a day. So I've already seen a 10. So somehow somebody got 10. That, some, that means two people sacrificed both of their attacks to them. They cleaned up three full teams and then still got one more. Like that's a flex right there, getting 10 stars in Guild Wars. Um, really, really cool. Okay, let me talk about how I feel about this now because I think that's... Um, uh, that's just something people have asked me a lot, so I'll just tell you how I feel. This feels like a beta test to me. This feels like, hey, here's a system, and we didn't really flesh out um, how we're going to pair the groups, but we made some groups, and we didn't really flesh out the um, support system fully yet, but we want to see if it works, and here you go, go for it. I don't mind. Like, I do not mind doing a live beta of this because I think this has potential to be really, really cool. And also in general, I am just pro having more features in the game. I would like for this to be run simultaneously with a regular guild battle. I don't know how you guys feel about that. If you feel really strongly that that's dumb, let me know, right? Like, if you don't like that idea, put it in the comments and tell me why you don't like it. Um, you might change my mind, you might not, I don't know. Uh, what else do I think about this? I would like more support options. Um, I love the idea of having the support option because before, if you wiped on your first attack, you're like, well, that's my day. And there wasn't a lot of strategy to that. This adds another level of strategy, which in general, I'm just going to be in favor of, right? Give me more ways to think about the game. Uh, encourage the players to use their minds a little more. And that's awesome. The... 540 cost for this guild battle I want to address a little bit. That's barely any kind of limitation. I mean, essentially, you can't run all double-cost units with UR vision cards. If you're short of that, you're probably fine. We have plenty of 70-cost UR units. We have plenty of... Um, like I, it, I, I'll shorten this up. It just doesn't feel very limiting to me. Um, I would have liked to see the limit considerably less than 540, or I would like to see just um, different rules. I know JP at one point got a like male only or female only guild battle. That seems really neat. Um, how cool would it be if you could only use female characters in your guild wars and then all the waifu collectors out there are going to clean up and all the uh, not waifu collectors and, and like, okay, let's be real for a second. How many of y'all out there are not getting female characters? I've talked to a ton of you that aren't getting male characters. I know you're out there, Two Cent, and I know you're out there like 49 other people who send me Discord messages about that. I'm O for a lifetime on hearing somebody say, I don't go for the girl character. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so I would love to see like an all male guild battle. Yeah, let, let's flex those characters for a while. That would just be neat. Now, if you do something like that, it does change the dynamic of the game in such a way that you should probably also run regular guild battle to just reward people who are, you know, preparing for that all the time too. Okay, next point I want to get at. The matching in this. Um, I hope that is really beta test uh, and not how it's going to be because I was looking through the group we're in. We are in group E and I was like, okay, there's probably about one guild in this group that will beat us um, regularly. And we fought them on the first day. Um, they beat us and we dropped to about 93rd. Okay, so like on the ladder, we're in the 20s on like the out of everybody ladder. And in our group E, we're at 93. And then the guild we fought today, it was like, come on. Um, it didn't feel very intuitive, right? 
the matching system didn't feel very intuitive. It just was like, it felt really rushed. So what I would like to see is some kind of system in place where maybe you um, have a bracket or something like that. I think there's a, I think there's a ton they could do with this besides just randomly lumping a hundred people into or a hundred guilds into a group saying, here's your group and uh, go because it's good. There's just going to be some very unbalanced fights in there. And I would just like to see a smarter system for that. Uh, what else? I don't know that I have a lot else. I've enjoyed it so far. Um, the map change was kind of awkward. I don't know if the new map that we were told we were going to get is just not ready. But um, I had some teams ready to go for that. And then I logged on Wednesday morning and I was like, oops, inserting missile team. Um, which was an easy trade-off because, uh, you know, we've been using missile teams for a while now. So, um, yeah, we haven't heard anything about that yet. I would like to maybe see a rotating map system. I think that would be cool. You know, just overall, my feeling on this is very positive. I think there's a lot of potential here, and I'm excited to see what this leads to in the future. And it's a fun break from regular Guild Wars. I just like to have them both at the same time. Okay, that probably got longer than I meant it to. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had great luck pulling for um, Sleepy Girl and Little G Magic Fist Man. So, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video.